The other thing I think is really interesting in that we fall into as marketers a lot is being afraid to repeat ourselves when it's like probably the most important thing we can do. It feels really boring. And I, I ran into this when I was working with Mel because what you said is like 5% of my audience is probably going to see this at a given time. So like it's okay to like reshare and repeat yourself. And my partner, Mandy, there at the time, we called it because she would get really bored. Mel would. She was like, we talked about this topic last week. I'm like, yeah, but people want to hear more about it. And we called it same song syndrome. Like, you know, you get a musician that's like playing the same set every week. And that's definitely something I've fallen into as like a new marketer is like feeling like, you know, I always need to go out and be impressive and make all these new things and have this like new hot angle. And it's a lot of work and it's really taxing. And it's like, I'm not saying, you know, phone it in and just like repost things, but finding new ways to say the same thing, I think is a big part of the job. This is uh, Inside Exit 5 with my new friend, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Oh, hello, Dave. <laughs> How you How doing? Are you? Busy time in your life right now. You got new job, wedding coming up, drive coming up. It's a busy time to be you right now, but you're doing an awesome job, and we thought it would be fun to come hang out on uh, Inside Exit 5, and we haven't done one in a while, so here we are. I know, exactly. Give me a chance to use my uh, fancy... COVID microphone I got with everyone else on the planet. <laughs> so you, uh, being the well-prepared person you are, you sent a couple notes about things that we should talk about today. But before we do that, maybe just briefly give give people, a bunch of people that are listening now probably get you in their inbox every week. Um, so Danielle joined us as head of content about two months ago. And maybe just give some people a quick background on uh, your your career story, how you got here, how you got into marketing, and what you're doing at Exit 5. Very long story short, um, I actually started my career in finance. I was a municipal bond analyst, and I'll pause to let you Google what that is <laughs> because it's not common knowledge. Um, but I loved it. I was great at Excel, um, but I was a little creatively bored. So I actually started um, an Instagram on the side about brunch in Boston and got like super into it and like learning photography and like how to grow it and ended up leveraging that kind of experience into my first content role, um, which was with a woman named Mel Robbins. She's an author and a motivational speaker and growing her Instagram. And then kind of just talked my way into SaaS from there. I got a job at ProfitWell and was like, I don't even know what B2B is, but I'm going to fake it till I make it. And <laughs> Patrick Campbell let me do that. And then, yeah, just a couple of roles in in the software industry. And then um, saw the job listing pop up for Exit 5. And I was like, holy shit, that looks absolutely perfect. I want to work with this bald guy. Um <laughs> 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 my daughter says uh she got she's she's seven and she has this little watch that she can send us voice messages from so, That's so she'll cute. never have social media but she has this watch right now and so we can i can know where she is down the street and she always sends me messages and she goes hi bald guy what are you doing she that's literally what she calls me <laughs> so it's, it's proper <gasps> Oh my and, god, she's so and cute, then, and um, she has red hair, so she does. I like her. They all, they so all much. do. They sure all, they <laughs> all sure do. Uh, it's, it's actually unbelievable. Do people stop you all the time and ask you about your hair? Or all like, the did time. they do that when you were a kid? Yeah, still. I mean, still, it still yeah. happens. It's like borderline <laughs> inappropriate. I feel like, like, like some, especially old women, they may. Oh my god! And I'm just standing there with my two kids and my bald head, like in the grocery store yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I, yeah, I get like very weird comments sometimes, usually from old men though, not the old women. Uh, it is old men. Old men's are like, ah, oh, ginger, huh? And I'm like, Jesus, leave me alone. Like, yeah. <laughs> like please yeah, go away. This is my seven year old. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, and then how would you describe your, um, your purview of, of, uh, of things at, at exit five? What is it today? And, and what do you think it will evolve to be? Yeah. Um, well, I was super excited when I saw the listing pop up and I honestly like didn't even pay attention to the title. <laughs> um, and then we decided it would be head of content, which was super exciting. Um, so obviously we are like Exit 5 is a content and community business. So I, you know, would say that I am responsible for leading 
the content side of that, um, which is this podcast <laughs> that you're listening to right now. It's our newsletter that you're hopefully getting in your inbox. And if you're not, you can just go to exit5.com slash newsletter. Shameless plug for that right there. <laughs> um, our webinars, or no, don't call them webinars. They are our monthly uh exit five live sessions. So that's kind of the purview right now. And where, you know, I think it's going, it'll still always be that, that, that realm. Um, and I'd like to think of that as like, how do we expand our content impact at exit five? Is it another podcast? Is it another newsletter brand? Is it, you know, and we'll think of that throughout the end of the year, but for right now, just kind of, you know, delving into all things content at exit five. What's interesting about this content role, and this is, there, there's kind of a lesson in like a hiring mistake that I've made in the past a bunch. And I think this will relate to a lot of people that listen to this that are in marketing roles or managing people. Any hiring mistake that I've made, it, it almost always comes down to because we didn't do the role ourselves first at some point. And so like, hey, we want to hire a, uh, you know, we think we're a SaaS company and we think we uh, we should be doing partner marketing. Well, let's go hire a partner marketing person. Like that's almost always like instant failure because you got to spend a bunch of money out the gate. You don't know what success looks like. And I feel like anytime we've had success with hiring at any company or even now with Exit 5, it's because we've done a little bit of that role first. And so your role as head of content actually was, this is essentially what I did for two years when I started the company, right? It was, I was writing the newsletter. I was doing the podcast. I was working with Hatch. I was figuring out what topics to talk about as webinar. As sponsors came in for webinars, for speaking opportunities, for all this Don't stuff. Call I was it a doing webinar. It. That's a webinar. <laughs> I got to do a hundred burpees after. No problem. No problem. I'm a savage. And then last year, uh, worked with someone awesome called Chantal Barley, and she was doing some of this like on a contract basis, part time. And that was super helpful. And that kind of gave me a better sense of like, okay, I basically spent a year and a half, two years doing this myself, then brought someone in on a, on a contract basis. And, and that was helpful. And then we decided like, then I, then I was ready. I didn't, wasn't ready to hire people full time yet. And so we kind of just decided to like pause on doing that and then waited about three to six months. And then I decided to hire Dan. And that was when the trajectory of the business changed for me because I was just going to initially have Dan run this business. This is a, the the God's honest truth. I <clears throat> was burnt out on doing this and I hired Dan because I wanted Dan to like manage this asset. Like it was like a rental property that I owned, right? Like um, you, you and Ross own some beautiful property down in the lake. You don't want to deal with it, but it's a nice money machine for you. Like let's hire someone to, to keep it going. And that was literally what I would hire Dan to do. I was like, I'm going to do some other stuff. You come in, you run this thing, send me regular updates. I'll pay you this salary. Here's what I'll take. I'll, I'll take this cut for myself. And then about, you know, three days into Dan, like digging into the business, he's like, dude, this is amazing. And I was like, I am. I'm pretty. Like, am I? I am. Okay. All <laughs> You're right. like, tell me more. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> and like that got me super fired up. And I think it's like you're working alone or, you know, even with contractors, it's just not the same level of like chemistry and camaraderie and relationship. And so him getting in and being excited about the business got me excited. Now we're texting every day. We're getting excited about the business. Then, then we decide to hire Matt. And then we decide like, okay, who, we need somebody to do this content stuff. Then we hire you. But we'd already done a bunch of that stuff, so it's bound to be successful. You know, obviously you can get the person fit wrong, but we haven't we haven't so far. And so, um, you know, you've been able to basically take that in. Dan, Dan loves this line. I don't know. Has he used this line? He's like, we're he's like we're not a comp, we're not people. We're not a business doing content. Now we're a content business. You know what I'm talking? Has he ever used that line to you? <laughs> I, it's oh, probably yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty but, sure that was on my like uh, 30, 60, 90. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so whatever whatever he means by that is what we're doing now, but. Uh, it's been super cool because like for a while, the newsletter was like, I would write something on LinkedIn. We'd kind of take that, jazz it up a little bit for the newsletter. And to see you come in, it's like, not only did we nail this hire, which magically you just came to us. It's not like we did anything special. <laughs> we didn't do anything special. <laughs> so shout out to you. But you, you've you elevated everything. And so like the newsletter now, it's like, it's a, it's, it's a product, right? Like you said, we're a content business. We want the newsletter to feel like a product, not like... Dave's, you know, newsletter, Dave's LinkedIn thoughts that we're trying to like, you know, grow an email list off of. And then also it was I mean, really, fair, they're great thoughts. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thought there, some might say they're, they're thought leadership thoughts, you know, wow. um, 
<laughs> but, but, uh, and it was also really important for me to diversify the business off of myself. I've been talking about B2B marketing and doing this for a long time. And, um, I wanted to diversify off myself, kind of bring other voices into the spotlight. And so like having someone like you take over the newsletter, put your own voice on it. Now you have such a great process. And like, I'm just blown away by when I get the draft of the newsletter, it's like, man, this is, this is so good. There's a story, like everything has leveled up and we're, we're, we're leveling up every week. The podcast has gotten better. All of our systems and processes have gotten better. And so I think that's just a lesson in whether you're hiring a head of content or not, the more you can do some of this role first, like can someone on your team carve out 20, 20% of their time to do that. Like, you know, Hey, we want to hire a partner marketing person. Great. Could the product marketing manager do this in 20% of their time to get started? I think you just set everybody else up for, for success. Um, yeah, I'm a big believer in that too. Like I, when I start something, I want to get into the weeds and figure out the mechanics before handing it off. Like even now with like the podcast and some of the newsletter stuff, like loading it up into HubSpot, like I need to understand how that works before I hand it off to someone like Anna. Yeah. I think that's what's cool about this job. And I think like, I think your role is going to continue to evolve. And so I think if we, if we stretch, it's only been two months, right? If we stretch this out a year and 90% of your job is, is writing the newsletter and doing the podcast, like I think then we haven't we haven't evolved and we haven't been successful versus like, no, you need to come in, you need to do the basics, you need to do that stuff. But a year from now, the role of content is going to continue to change. And then we have other people on the team that you can like delegate some of that stuff to and train others on it. And so I think it's a really good, it's also a lesson. And like, I do think the fundamentals and the basics matter. You got to nail the pull-ups, push-ups, squats before you do the crazy, like complex lifts. And, and I think that's, that's where we're at right now. Um, What's your reaction to Exit Five from the from the inside as a as a company? So you saw it from the outside. What do we have going on on the inside that you think people might not know? It was really cool to come in because I was uh, an OG D D G M G. I always mess up that acronym. Yeah, don't troll me. <laughs> don't troll me on my own podcast. On the on the on the Patreon, but that was so. I start like I said. I started at Profitwell. I didn't have any idea what. To B was. I remember like going or like SaaS. I mean, obviously, I did my research before the interview, but like Googling only tells you so much. And that's where I turned to was like, okay, I just need to binge this and like learn some of the lingo. So seeing it evolve along the way and then like keeping up with it, I think I was in the Facebook group, but like I honestly hate Facebook. So that's where I fell off. <laughs> um, and then I saw actually Matt popping up on my LinkedIn. Um, a couple, I don't know, maybe a couple months before I like connected with him, started following him. And then I saw that you guys were going to be hiring. And I was like, I just have a feeling. I just have a gut feeling. I'm just going to follow along. And then I saw the posting. I was like, yes. Um, but seeing it from the outside to the inside is, I think I kind of had the same reaction as Dan, where it's like, it looks awesome from the outside, but then you get in the inside and you're like, holy shit, we have so much we can do. And like, there's so much just like, raw gold here like even we were talking about like the the newsletter of like a lot of that is really listening to these podcast episodes and like digging out the takeaways which like I haven't even had to do anything new really if I'm being <laughs> honest like I'm not out there like researching all these topics I'm like hey I'm gonna listen to this podcast episode because I got a ton of downloads someone likes this um so I think like it's really the same reaction as Dan at first of like getting in and being like, oh my God, there's so much we can do, which is awesome. But also like, it can be overwhelming because you're like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I want to go do like 20,000 things. Yeah. Especially <laughs> when you're, like, especially when you're working with me and I'm like, and we could do this thing and we could do this thing. And here's another new day. <laughs> and here's another new day. And what about this? And why aren't we doing this yet? Like, it's a, it's a lot. Bring on the YouTube shorts. <laughs> that's right where's our yes there's, i could i could go for hours yeah <laughs> that's why you got to use that you got to use that founder now that i'm a big time big time founder myself ceo uh you got to use that matrix of like when the founder sends an idea you know like is it a good idea yes can you actually do it no okay so just just smile and nod <laughs> put it away for now <laughs> my my litmus has always been like have they mentioned it three times 
Have they followed up three times? That means it's actually important. <laughs> oh my God. I had one in the past where it was like, I need a Wikipedia page. I'm like, okay, let it go. <laughs> Where's my Wikipedia page? Okay. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. Third time. Where's my Wikipedia page? Why isn't it up yet? Okay, shit. I got to go do this. Literally, if you've ever, and, if, and that, that's one of those projects, like if you've ever done that, it takes like six months. You got to hire some like, you know, yeah. black ops, like, like hacker somewhere to like create the wiki page. But yeah, I feel you. It's anyway. Wikipedia, I think is like one of the hardest things to do. Cause like, I don't, I don't know what like kind of black ops they have going on in the background, but like they always know if you're related to the person that you're trying to make a Wikipedia page for. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And then like, but you can't, it's very, it, you have to, everything has to be like factual in some way. Anyway, I like what you I like what you're saying about the the content machine piece of this because I I think what we're doing is actually a cool marketing lesson for a lot of the the businesses and people that will listen to us. It's like by the time you joined, we had already done 150 episodes of this podcast, right? And I think we're big on like like the business that we're creating is not we're shifting from like Dave's hot marketing takes business to like just knowledge about B2B marketing sourced from our community and the crowd. And we have a community with 4,000 members. We've done 150 podcast episodes. We have this amazing network of experts and guests. Well, the opportunity there is to be curators, right? We don't have to be original creators. And so you're doing something like going back and listening to this podcast we did on product marketing with Jeff Hardison, the head of product marketing at Calendly. And, and, and you're listening to that and you're turning that into a newsletter episode uh, for a newsletter content. But you're, the, the newsletter is not like, here's in this episode, Jeff covered three things. It's like, you're doing a good job of storytelling within that context. You're like, okay, so you always have a setup. You're like, so my fiance, soon to be husband and I were on a walk the other day and we saw this billboard and that made me think blank. And then like, you have a story, you have like a great story, you have a great hook, and then you lead into that episode. And then we're able to use those. Like, oh, here's, here's Jeff's, you know, seven step framework for X. And what's amazing is like that content is already there. No one is going to respond to that email and be like, lame. I already listened to this podcast episode. Like there's just so much overlap. It's almost like with LinkedIn, right? If I have a, I have 170,000 followers on LinkedIn, I write a LinkedIn post, less than 5% of my audience ever sees what I write. And so it's the same thing. We're like, we could, I could take that post. If I have a post that performs well, I take it, I save it. And I post it again, maybe with a little bit of a different hook in like three to six months. And so we can do some really cool stuff with repurposing. Even now we're, we're launching a new thing here, this like marketing accelerator. And we're doing this, uh, in this fall after our event, we're doing this, um, B2B marketing roast and we've crowdsourced like a hundred speakers. We, we can't you say yes to all of them, but we we've crowds, like people have raised their hand to say like, I want to participate in your content. And so I think the role of you being head of content here is not necessarily like original content creator. It's more like managing editor marketer head of this like program that we're running and then like over time there's going to be contractors and freelancers and agencies and guest posts and i think that's what's cool about this content job at this type of business yeah and that's a really good point and it's it's two things you said that i want to touch on one is just like a little personal note. it's so funny when i was a kid i like always dreamed i was like what is my like ideal job and for some reason i was always like i want to be like a magazine editor <laughs> or like editor in chief or something like that and that's like very similar to what we're doing now right like oh you're yeah working editor with in chief is a good is a good way to frame yeah that too. yeah like you're you're curating really like the insights the experts it doesn't need to be me like i am not you know the the fashion expert if we're gonna get all like devil wears prada on it but like we're finding our our marketing designers um but the other thing i think is really interesting in that we fall into as marketers a lot is being afraid to repeat ourselves when it's like probably the most important thing we can do. <laughs> and it feels really boring. And I, I ran into this when I was working with Mel um, because a lot of the content, you know, it, it, what you said is like 5% of my audience is probably going to see this at a given time. So like, it's okay to like reshare and repeat yourself. And my, my, partner Mandy there at the time, we called it because she would get really bored. Mel would. She was like, oh, 
like we talked about this topic last week. I'm like, yeah, but people want to hear more about it. Um, and we called it like a uh, same song syndrome. Like, you know, you get a musician that's like playing the same set every week. <laughs> and that's definitely something I've fallen into as like a new marketer is like feeling like, you know, I always need to go out and be impressive and make all these new things and have this like new hot angle. And it's, it's, it's a lot of work and it's really taxing. And it's like, I'm not saying, you know, phone it in and just like repost things, but find finding new ways to say the same thing, I think is a big part of the job. And you got to play the hits. Like if you know something works, right, you got to you gotta go back to that. I wanted to ask you this because you have in a very short time, like basically not even a year yet, right? Gone from solo Dave doing this maybe with some freelancers to Dave and friend, Dave and Dan, and then... Oh, we're not friends. <laughs> we're colleagues. Dave, Dan, and Matt. And then now, all of a sudden, we were this team of five. And I remember on my and Anna's first day, you said, basically, like, we're a whole new company from this day forward. Like, So how has that been for you moving through in a very short time period, like you to just you and someone else to you and three people to now like a, a whole ass company? <laughs> That's a, a H a H A C no an H a W a W a W A C a whole ass company. <laughs> yeah, I like that. W A C. Like that. <laughs> There's this guy we used to work with at Drift, and his name was Sean Lane. And for some reason, one of the sales guys nicked him, nicknamed him Sean Ass Lane, and his name. <laughs> so everybody called him Sal. Like that literally became like the CEO of the company. Like, where's Sal? Sean Ass Lane, whole ass company. That's their yeah, title. Yeah, whole for ass this. company. How did we become a whole ass company? <laughs> All right, I'm writing that down. Inside Exit Five: How we created a whole ass company. Um, okay, so there's a couple a couple things to say. First of all, it feels amazing. <laughs> it feels so good because I've been a, li a little bit busier with non work stuff than than normal this week between children and we're moving houses and. Um, oh, I didn't know that. That's exciting. Yeah, surprise. I'll show you details later. Um, and uh, the weather was nice, and so I got a little golf in. But basically, I I have so much to catch up on today. I open my Slack, and like pfft, the business happens. The business is happening without me, which is like that is the ultimate dream. That is the ultimate goal. And number one was to get me out of the day to day machine. And so like the, the golden handcuffs of the solo business was the business went as I went. And so if I, you know, wasn't working that day, the business was not growing that day. Now I have taken resources, which is money, traded that for hiring people. And so, yeah, like the burn, like we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars more than we spent last year on exit five, but the business is on pace to more than double this year. And that was exactly what I wanted. And so basically I wanted to take home the same amount of money from exit five, but do it with a real team because now I feel like we have a real company and it's a real asset and it, it's a real, it's a real business. And so that part has been amazing. It's just like for, for, for so long I was on social media being like solopreneurship is the way this is the only way I can work. And it's just not true. And so a couple of things that I, that I think of is number one, like I mentioned, the business can run without me. Number two, it's actually given me like so much more energy than I ever expected. I, back to the example of like Dan, like that, that's now multiplied times five. Like I love what my role has become now, which is like we have grownups working here. We have mature individuals who are smart and perfectly capable you and I have had plenty of conversations now. Like I don't micromanage, like I might micromanage like a detail, but like you had some shit going on last week and I was like, do your, like do your thing. And you're like, seriously? And I'm like, yes, like you're, you're here because like we trust you completely. And so I think you build trust with the team that way, but having four or five other people work on the business is so fun. Like to see other people working on this and to build chemistry as a team. And I used to go through this narrative, like, oh, we're not saving the world. We're just doing B2B marketing. But 
we are, we are we're like, we're building each other's careers. We're helping each other. We're building careers. We are doing meaningful work. People care about what their work is. Like you go to an event or something, or you meet a new neighbor. What's the second question out of their mouth? They're like, oh, Danielle. And so what do you do for work? Like we put a lot of stock in what we do at, at, uh, as individuals at work, having us work on something together, having that shared victory, like just how in like our general channel and Slack, we have like these little jokes about like, that's where all the new trials pop in and just seeing Matt be like yesterday, seven, eight, nine, and like how you'll send a screenshot of something cool that happened and like do like hashtag funnel or something like just we're building a, a chemistry and a culture and I think that is something that I underrated I thought of it was just going to be much more transactional like I'm just going to hire a team and but it's it's super fun building relationships and doing this together as a team that part has been really really fun um, I also think like we're five times better because we have five brains working on this business besides mine and there's other ideas there's other opinions like me booking speakers for an event and having you be like hey man a lot of dudes here <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh shit okay yeah you're right okay that was a natural bias of mine like okay cool all right boom that's better now like hey what it, here's this design for this shirt actually no Anna had a different idea and we're gonna do it this way like getting four or five different opinions and brains in here has been awesome and just feels really good to like have built something myself not not on my own but like we started this company out of out of thin air and now we're real like we we pay people salaries we do good work together that part is really fun and i also think we're we're not working in an office we have a light, like I want you to have a life and I'm, I'm big on family and like life outside of work and just taking care of yourself and everything. And I think I want to set an example for everybody inside the company to be able to do that. And it seems like we're on that pace. And so it's been awesome. It's definitely changed a lot of my beliefs about work and about working solo. And I was like, I'm never going to work on a team again. And now I'm like, no, I can't, I can only see doing it this way. So I don't know. Did I, did I not touch on anything I should touch on? That was just a long, long winded, like me being excited. No, I think that was good. And w one thing I want to chat about a little bit more, because I feel like it's been an interesting transition. You were saying like you were all in LinkedIn, like, hey, I am all in on this like sol solopreneurship, like never building a team again. But you were also getting really burnt out, like you said, right? And having a team has kind of helped from my, from, I mean, from my perspective has helped you kind of get out of that burnout and have like a new energy for the business. And I, yeah, absolutely. It has because it's, that's a cool, that's a good observation because I think it's, it's allowed me to re to like, I don't, I wouldn't say like rebrand myself, but it's given me like a different set of skills to work on. Right. And so like solo business focus on B2B marketing, I got to have the hot takes. I got to do the, like, I got to be Mel Robbins, right? Like I got to be like the solo brand person, like, doing the shtick, right? Hiring people was to get my face like out of the spotlight a little bit. Now I host the podcast, I do webinars, but my role has changed, right? But but that that has now me meant like, it's, it's not just about me. I can shift my role to do like, let's think about strategy. Where is Exit 5 going? Like, oh yeah, I have some time and space to think about those things. And I think people need that stuff. I think people that work with you, they need a vision. And I think I've articulated some of that stuff to you and I don't think it's perfect, but I think you can have a, maybe this company might go in three or four different directions, but I think you can start to paint a little bit of picture in your mind about like which, okay, I can see where this could go from here. I don't see how we're just going to do this forever. And so it's given me time to like write more, think more. I love the problem solving, you know, I'll get a message from Dan and it's like, Hey, this company, like this, this sponsor that we're working with, like they're pissed about this thing or that we want to fix this thing. Like I love, I get to do those, those challenges more. And so I truly feel like I'm operating a company as opposed to just like sharing my hot takes about why B2B marketing <laughs> is broken. And so I think it's allowed me to change my identity, right? And, and kind of similar, like think about your, your career story, right? Like you, you were working in finance and now you're like re you've reinvented yourself and like you're building your your head of content muscle right now. I think I'm in a different phase of life where it's allowed me to to build some new muscles. And then I also think I just was being lazy. Like I was it was very easy to just like do enough to keep things going. And I do think that 
not to like blow myself up, but I do think my my lazy for is is a lot of <laughs> is a lot for most people. But I feel like I was not pushing myself. Like I was not. I was just kind of like showing up, doing a couple hours of work on Exit Five with no vision, with no long term. Now. I think having a team of five like forces me to do that. Like it forces me to 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 have to like use some muscles and don't let those things atrophy. And I love the creativity and and trying to figure things out. So ask me a year from now when like I'm sure things are gonna go wrong at some point. Like I I do kind of wake up sometimes and I'm like, this is going too good. <laughs> oh my god. Dan and I had that during the interview process because it happened like so fast. Like I submitted my uh my application and literally like five minutes later <laughs> dan was like connecting with me on linkedin and i was just like hey you want to chat today yeah. and he was like your application was so good when can we talk and i was like i'm free well, this afternoon <laughs> i don't know if we ever shared i don't know if this has ever come up with you so sure let's share it a lot let's share it with thousands of people on a podcast but like our biggest red flag was with you was like are we is this happening too fast <laughs> Like, why are we all, why are we all in on this right now? Like, this is like, it was like after a day and a half and Dan was like, we're ready. I'm ready to make an offer. I'm like, yeah, I, I feel good about it too. But like, hold on, hold on. Like, you know, you have to put some guardrails on yourself sometimes. Like, are we yeah. doing this too? Like, are we really doing, like, should we really do this? Right. And like, like we just bought this house and we had the same thing. We we're like, wait, this, ha are we really, do we really want to do this? Like this is happening really fast. <laughs> that was the biggest red flag. Yeah, I know. And like Dan and I literally had, I think, like made the offer, like had a conversation and I was just like, almost like artificially stopping myself because I was like, oh, like I'm ready to sign this. Like, I'm I'm ready. I'm excited. And then like we both were like, are we having like a little bit of like too good to be true moment? But like we were just very like honest about it. And he was like, OK, why don't we like take a day? And then we did. But I was like, I already like know the decision because I trust my gut and it worked out, but it was just, it was really funny. And in that it, it clicked like so fast. Do you think it takes a certain level of maturity, comfort, comfort, speaking up ability to own your shit in this type of business? Like where it's this, we don't have an office. You it's, it's run by a person who like hates lots of meetings and doesn't want to do lots of process. And so like, I'm not going to be on every meeting every day. We're not going to meet all the time. We're not going to do like rah, rah team Friday. Maybe at some point we'll have to. <laughs> right. And do you think it, do you know what I'm trying to articulate is like, is this not, would this not work out for everybody? Is there a certain slice of person who maybe this is the right fit for? And it's like any job is like that, right? Is like, there's a good, like a, a certain person who's going to fit in there. And I've definitely been in roles that like I didn't fit in and it wasn't like the the fault of really me or or the company it was just like it just wasn't truly wasn't a fit and that sounds like cliche and I think that that's a similar thing here but when you feel that it's like such a fit like that's that's pretty rare I think and I mean the reasons it fits for me is like I I like smaller teams cuz I like knowing the people I work with really well I also like I don't like like bullshit and bureaucracy and like all of this hierarchy and like I can't, you know, say something to this person and I have to like play Game of Thrones a little bit. Like I've just I hate that. <laughs> Which I hate we don't that. Have. I I've hate always it. had a hard time that even as like a 20 I'm I was worked at a like 1500 person company when I was like 23 and I got in a lot of trouble one time with my boss because this I just could not believe how much nonsense was happening in this meeting that I should not have spoke. I was supposed to be in the meeting just to like take notes and watch. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wait, this is how, this is really how these people work. Like, this is so insane. There's so much gossip and politics and toxic bullshit. Like if you and me just were in this room and for five minutes, we could figure out this problem. And I was like, whoa. And I think that was something that I look back on now. And I'm like, I don't ever want to work that way. If I can dictate how we work, like, just get shit done, like speak up, get shit done. Like if you see some trash on the ground, like you live here, pick it up, put it in the trash. Like. Yeah, exactly. And also there's like enough guardrails that it's not chaos, but also enough flexibility that it's like you get to be a little bit of like an entrepreneur within Exit 5 too. Of like, 
hey, I have this idea. Like, hey, I'm going to try this with the newsletter this week. And it's not so like regimented that it's like, okay, well, this needs like eight levels of approval before we, you know, let it, let ourselves test it. And by the time you actually get it to, you know, publishing, it's just like, it doesn't even resemble the thing you started with. So like the test has gone out the window in the first place. Um, and I think like some people need that structure and that's, totally okay like I mean I like I said I worked in finance the first part of my career and I also like I just I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and I don't I don't regret that experience at all and there was definitely a point where I was like I wish I went to school for something different or I wish I was doing this but like I actually think that experience was really good for me I wouldn't change it looking back um I liked it like and like very practically like I made a decent amount of money (laughs) which let me save and also let me be able to like take that leap when I needed to. But it was also just not the environment for me. Because if you want to talk about hierarchy, like work at a like 10,000 person financial, heavily regulated (laughs) industry. (laughs) Woof. (laughs) Yeah. Woof. (laughs) Yeah. All right. We're going to wrap up. Danielle, thanks for hanging out. Cool. Um, We'll, 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 we'll talk more, but we'll have Danielle back on. We'll do more of these, but go, go to LinkedIn right now. Go find Danielle, Danielle Messler on LinkedIn, connect with her if you haven't already. We gotta we gotta get her more connections. So go send her a connection. Be like, man, I heard you on the Exit Five podcast with Dave. Like, you're so great. And now I read your newsletter. Now I heard your voice. So we got this. And Danielle has the keys to the podcast kingdom. So like, let's let's get this episode out sooner than later. Uh, so we can, we, you know, it's fresh. We, we need this out now. We need this before your wedding. We need this before drive. And then we will see that you could actually still snag a ticket to drive. You could go to exit5.com slash drive. There's like maybe five or 10 tickets still available. If you want to join us, we have drive September 11th and 12th right here in Burlington, Vermont. I'll be there. Danielle's driving up from Boston with, with label her label maker, maker in the backseat. <laughs> Love that. So go find her on LinkedIn, connect with her, send her a message, and that will make my day. As a, That's the only call to action from this episode. R- r- take back what I said about mm-hmm. Drive. Don't go to Drive. Don't go to the website. <laughs> go to LinkedIn and connect with Danielle and send her a message there. And thank you for the continued support and listenership here on the Exit 5 Podcast. Exit 5.